Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today's video is entitled The Second Heart Attack, The Teachings of Plato and Pegasus. Okay, so the first thing to say is that anyone anywhere at any time can have a heart attack and whenever a heart attack occurs, it is devastating. It is devastating both for the patient and their family. I think three things can occur with a heart attack. Obviously, a heart attack can be life-threatening, so it can take someone's life. It can leave the person with substantial heart muscle damage, and that is called heart failure, and we look for that. But then the third thing is that, let's say the patient survives the heart attack and there's no damage, the third thing is this risk of a second heart attack. That is the thing that, you know, haunts the poor patient who's had this first heart attack. What are my chances of having a second heart attack? And in this video, I wanted to talk to you about the kind of things that could increase the risk of second heart attack and some new interesting research which may help reduce the risk of second heart attack. Currently what happens is if a patient comes in with a heart attack, what we do is we go and have a look at their heart arteries to see whether the heart attack was caused by a blockage and where a blockage is found, if the blockage has not been there for a particularly prolonged period of time, the blockage is generally fixed or the narrowing is fixed with a stent. In general, if you find other narrowings in the other heart arteries, which aren't responsible for the heart attack, provided they're not more than about 70% narrowed, a lot of people will leave them alone because they think, well, there's no point fixing this. We could actually make things worse because this isn't causing the problem. And in some way, trying to interfere with this could make things worse. And because they're not actually causing a problem, fixing it is not going to take the problem away. So currently, the treatment is that you fix the thing that is most narrowed or the culprit. If there are other major narrowings, you try and fix them at the same time or fix them at a later date. But if there are sort of narrowings which are less than 70% or are deemed not tight enough to be causing a problem, then they're left alone. And the patient is usually discharged home on aspirin and something called ticagrelor these days, although previously it used to be some, uh, an agent called clopidogrel. They're both antiplatelet agents. Antiplatelet agents stop platelets in our blood coming together and um, uh, helping the formation of a blood clot. It is commonly uh, thought of that when you have a heart attack, it is the platelets coming together as a result of, of some kind of inflammatory process that causes the blood vessel to block off and that then causes a heart attack. So if you can in some way stop the platelets from coming together, you reduce the risk of a further heart attack. So patients at this point in time are given aspirin and clopidogrel or aspirin and the more effective antiplatelet called ticagrelor for one year. And they're given a statin, a cholesterol lowering agent. And again, the idea is that if patients are given a cholesterol lowering agent, regardless of their cholesterol, the chances of a heart attack uh, in the future get less. And then they're given medications like beta blockers. Now, Pegasus and Plato were two interesting studies. Uh, Plato was an interesting study which showed that actually in patients who have had a heart attack, if you give them this additional antiplatelet for 12 months, in addition to the aspirin, this additional antiplatelet being a ticagrelor, I think it's also called Brilinta. So if you combine aspirin and Brilinta for a year, then the outcomes in patients who've had a heart attack are much better than if you don't give them the second antiplatelet agent. So that's how we do things. This is from this Plato study. The problem is that, of course, there may still be a bunch of people at the end of those 12 months who may be at a higher risk of problems because at 12 months you stop one of the antiplatelets and you just continue on the aspirin. So researchers became interested and said, well, are there a group of patients who would benefit from having the aspirin and the Brilinta for a much longer period of time, maybe indefinitely, um, because there must surely be a group of those patients at the end of the year who are still more likely to have heart attacks, a second heart attack, compared to the other patients. And so this is where this interesting study came along called Pegasus, and this was to address that. And in Pegasus, what they found that was that there were four groups of patients who were at a higher risk of having a second heart attack, even at the end of that one year, compared to others. And those four groups were patients who had diabetes, okay? So anyone who had diabetes tended to, to be a, at a higher risk. 
and therefore if they were given a combination of aspirin and Berlinta for a longer period of time, three years, uh, they tended to benefit significantly from that. So remember diabetes is a process, not a number. So just because you don't have the number doesn't automatically mean you're not diabetic. And in fact, unfortunately, most hospitals will check the blood sugars when the patient is admitted with their first heart attack, but they're not so stringent about checking the blood sugars regularly after that. So one thing I would say is if you have had a heart attack, it is really, really important that you make sure that your blood sugars are checked very aggressively because if indeed the blood sugars reach that level where you are suspected of having diabetes, then you could make a very good case for taking uh, aspirin combined with this other antiplatelet agent called ticagrelor for a much longer period of time beyond that one year period after the heart attack. The second uh, group of patients who benefited considerably from this combination over a prolonged period of time were patients who had renal dysfunction. So if you have kidney disease, if you have kidney dysfunction, if your kidneys are not completely normal, then you may be in that group because it appears that patients who have renal dysfunction for some reason tend to be more prone to developing heart disease. They tend to have more unstable heart disease. And in those people, taking a combination of these medications for a further three years after the heart attack, after the first year of the heart attack, can reduce the likelihood of a second heart attack. So that's another thing to bear in mind. The third thing to bear in mind is, remember I told you that they would do the angiogram, they would fix the narrowing, which was the tight narrowing, they'd fix any other tight narrowings, but they would otherwise if they weren't tight narrowings, they would leave them alone. Well, if you had multi-vessel disease, so if you had more than 50% narrowings in more than one blood vessel, then it would seem that the risks of a second heart attack are greater later on in life. And therefore, those patients also seem to benefit from taking a combination of aspirin and this new agent, Ticagrelor, at a dose of 60 milligrams twice a day for a further three years after the one year post heart attack. And the final group, which is really interesting, is a group of patients who have peripheral artery disease. So we know that you get heart artery narrowings, that's why people have heart attacks, but you can have narrowings in all the other blood vessels. And sometimes that can be quite difficult because the patient may be asymptomatic, so it's never picked up. But particularly if you have been diagnosed with narrowings in the legs or anywhere else, this is called peripheral artery disease, then that group of patients seems to benefit in a big way from taking prolonged combination therapy. There are no doubt, there are other things you can do to prevent a second heart attack in terms of lifestyle, you know, controlling your risk factors, adhering to medications. But this was another really interesting bit of research that came out that actually, if you combine the antiplatelets, give the patient two antiplatelet agents for a prolonged period of time, these four subgroups tended to benefit greatly from that in terms of having less heart attacks in the future. Patients with peripheral artery disease, patients with multivessel coronary disease, patients with diabetes, and patients with renal dysfunction. And this is what Plato and Pegasus, these two interesting studies taught us. So I hope you find this useful. Um, if you're watching this video, the main things really here are make sure someone keeps a very close watch on your blood sugars, Make sure that you don't develop diabetes over a period of time, because if you do, then you should be on, you should ask for a second antiplatelet agent. Get someone to keep an eye on your kidney function closely, and ask speak your doctor to look for peripheral artery disease. Have you got any disease elsewhere? The person who has peripheral disease has a larger burden of vascular disease and therefore is more likely to benefit. And finally, know what the angiogram showed. Did you have multivessel disease or was it just one vessel? And if you had multivessel disease, then a case can be made for you asking to remain on two antiplatelet agents for a much longer period of time. So I hope you found this useful. I'd love to hear what you think of this video. And once again, thank you so much for all that you do for me.